Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video of Fox Flicks on Josh Scorcher. Today we're checking out the top 15 giant bosses. Let's go. What kind of bosses do we want to get on? Giant humans, robots, or monsters? Well, how about all of the above? <laughs> Never get old. It is so awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, here we go. Top fifteen. You see, you turn into a giant woman. Oh, I think there isn't any doubt that we gamers love fighting giant adversaries. Yes, Making we do. a boss big is an easy way to make it intimidating, as well as super satisfying to defeat. So it's no surprise that there are uh, many, Shadow many giant bosses. So let's have a look at the colossal boss fights that really gave us the fights Whoa, of our lives. Of now for this distance. list, the rules aren't gonna be exactly what you'd expect. For hmm. one, we're gonna factor in the game feel of these bosses first and foremost. How okay. big the boss is on a relative scale to its environment, how big it is compared to the player, and how much it yeah, that makes feels sense. like you're putting in the effort to take down a large and durable opponent. Yeah, While largeness on sense. standard measurements alone can help, it isn't going to be the most important thing we look at. Second, what type of boss is it? Damn. If they're machines, we're going to look at robots and mechs over vehicles. There are way too many yeah, giant okay. battleships and shoot 'em up, so let's focus on the boss types that are a tad more personal. If they're RPG abominations, they Whoa. definitely have an accurate official scale, since most of these bosses tend to be inconsistent Takes with how so they're long. sized up. And you know what? Okay. This is yet another list where we talk about bosses that oh, are significantly no sizable. Let's double down and go for a top 15. Brace God. yourselves, because this list is going to be one hefty chonker. Oh, Mr. Oh, Clean Adam. Magic Eraser Power. Here we go. Let's big shot. Giant when it comes to bosses turning giant, you don't get any more classic and recognizable than Mario's own Bowser. Heck, Hell during yeah. Massive is so central to his character, there's an entire game that made it an internal mechanism. Oh, Granting Big Boy Bowser has been such a common occurrence in Mario games that it did become kind of routine. But for every fight that doesn't work, there's always a handful that left a good impression. So how mm -hmm. about we look at some of the best giant Bowser fights the series has to offer? Starting Kill off, us? New Super Mario Bros. The U. After Bowser. all the finales of you just running away from Giant Bowser, it's super refreshing to finally face him head on. You gotta kick Junior out of his clap <laughs> nice. car and use it to smash Bowser right in the scalp. All the while, Ooh, he painful. floods the battlefield with a massive slew of fireballs and tries to flatten you with his oversized shell spin. Next up, Dream Team. You uh, face off against him as that. Giant Luigi as you both teeter over platforms surrounded by lava. All the while, you will summon his minions after you as you fend them off in a series of quick time events. No, no, no. I swear these are good ones. To cap off the fight, Luigi and Bowser have a big old Beyblade duel as you hammer Bowser's shell over one last platform. And last, <laughs> but certainly not least, Ooh, Bowser's, Bowser's Fury. Fury. Throughout the campaign, nice. Bowser hunts you down with a barrage of flames and spikes. It's not until you get the Giga Ball that when you can finally tussle down Giga with the Bell. contaminated Koopa King. As he returns to his normal form and steals the Giga Bells, you give him chase That's in one of the is. toughest battles Mario ever has against his arch nemesis. Oh, damn. As much as it is true to Mario's core for some boss fights to be platformer just based, like it's pretty clear that the best bigger. Bowser fights out there are the ones where you actually beat the scaly stuffing out of him. And the giant Bowser fights are no exception you know, to this case. Well, I've had my fill for these fights, if Nintendo were to give us another one and make it as thrilling as these three, I'd welcome it. I mean, why not? It's always fun to just fight a giant boss. This is the fit. As much as I love the Arkham series, I gotta admit that most of the boss fights for Asylum are kind of samey, bane yeah, type a boss fights. They're noted. decent, but they're too similar in concept and execution. Obviously, two brawls in Asylum are the exception to this. Poison ah. Ivies and... Oh, oh, oh. Hell, bro. Oh, in little bat. You're in my world now. It's a... Scarecrow again. I 
surprised Wait, the heck really out of this guy and mind fuck bosses, and he's getting his just due again today. Whenever Batman gets a cow full of Scarecrow's fear toxin, the Cape Crusader is forced to endure a terrifying hallucination. Including, Did you but not out a giant boss seeing his loved ones dying doing before just him, running? reliving the worst day of his life, and what I assumed was the game actually breaking at first. Each illusion ends with oh you God, being dragged into a hellish <laughs> landscape where Scarecrow towers over all is on the hunt for the bite-sized Dark Knight. To survive, you have to keep out of the, the twisted doctor's night? sights, hmm. sneak past him, occasionally that fight off some skeletal like hordes, candy. and shine the bat signal to end his haunting game of hide-and-seek. And you've got to endure it three times. And unlike Orochi, the three That's times fine. are actually freaking different! Uh, you just can't help yourself, can you? Now, the Scarecrow fights are spooky, <laughs> petrified, Guess and all not. kinds of fucked up. But why is he so low on the list? Well, to be honest, compared to others in terms of scale, Scarecrow as a giant doesn't really measure up, mostly because it was all an illusion. However, mm -hmm. if you really stop I mean, to think it about it, the illusion of his size could be symbolic of the grip he has over Batman's mind. Just consider this. One dose of his I fear. That. Hold on, folks. Be right back. We're back. Let's go. Gas and the bat is at his mercy. Reality completely melts and distorts, and his greatest oh. fears perform their terrible dance in front of his eyes. His fear of failure, reliving the most traumatic moment in his entire life, the nagging the paranoia that he's just as bat. bad as, if not worse than, the deranged criminals he fought so hard to protect Gotham from. These are all legit fears that would keep any mortal man tossing and turning at night. And at the end of the day, Batman is still is only human, right and it. no man is immune to fear. Scarecrow knows this and turns it into his deadliest weapon. And if you control a man's fear, you control the man. While there are He's much right. better giant fights on this list, it really goes to show how dangerous the hardships we've been through can influence our minds. One terrifying shot. Now on number 13, my lucky number. One thing I'd like to see more games explore is being miniature. Ooh. There's just so much potential for exploring our own world from a completely new perspective. To kinda scratch that uh, edge, Pikmin. we have the Pikmin franchise, where Love everyday it. objects tower above your characters. Thus, I have to emphasize the whole size compared to player character thing. On its own, Quaggle Meyer Clops isn't oh, really yeah, that big. Like the average baby Clops. is bigger than he is. Compared to your captains, though, it's massive. Oh, the yeah. fight begins with you breaking the crystal shell and causing the core to emerge in the creepiest way possible. Oh, it yeah, gets worse. Yeah, that thing is terrifying. From there, you have to weaken we its legs to expose the core frozen. and attack it directly, but be careful. It's possible for it to yep, eat your Pikmin if they stay up too long. Did you know that's actually how a clam's tongue works in real life? Yes, You're actually. Welcome. With all that said, I can't really I rank Quagglemire Clops any higher to the whole giant not actually being giant thing. Regardless, yeah, it's hard to yeah, deny how memorable yeah. it is if you played it, especially considering it gets fought at the end of a <laughs> vicious starvation arc in Pikmin 3. Nothing says tension like throwing a big old sentient pebble in the face of your army. Oh, Cold and Adam, season can bring us so And we're back. I wonder if this giant horse is going to be on the list. Alright everybody, let's talk it. about Pokemon Sword and Shield again! Okay. Quiet. I'm glad to see the sword and shield hate train is finally dying out. Come on, I'm not gonna pretend I don't value so, the great things about Gigantamax? this game just because of Game Freak's oh, shoddy of business this. approach. Duh. Sure, people still have mixed thoughts about Dynamax, but I thought it was fun to see Pokemon turn huge, with some of them even having their own special forms. Mm -hmm. Like, if anything, they gave us a prime candidate for this list. A ton of this. I'm sure you're aware of Disc Boy by galaxy. this point, an abominable entity of power who brought galaxy, upon the Hydra. darkest day all across Galar. What some of you may not be aware of, however, is how big Eternatus actually is. In its base form alone, it's 20 meters long, making it yeah. the biggest Pokemon to date, surpassing even Whale Lord. Of Whoa. course, that's only cookie crumbs okay. compared to the absolute scale of its Eternamax form. Stretching up to 100 meters in length, Few things in the Dude. world of Pokemon reach the same level of intimidation as this twisted dragon of entropy in terms of size. Well, unless you count Virus Groudon, but that oh, really sucks. Yeah. In this form, Eternatus boasts a fair coverage of max moves, such as Max Ooze, Max Flare, and Max Wormwind. It takes the cooperative effort of not just you and Hop, but also the legendary dogs of Galar to bring down this monster. The shield of defense. And it's... 
and the it's blade. It's kind of. Anyone else feel like I, I we can't have a train say for this? Tell me about it. No, shut up. Yeah, the fight is <laughs> really stupid easy, but honestly, I don't care. I mean, it's Pokemon. This fight just feels right, from the scale to the corrupted skies to the spectacular music piece, really setting up the awe-inspiring I really atmosphere love how it's surrounding just a giant the box. Eternatus may not get it's the official going... tertiary legendary spot as Rayquaza, Giratina, and Curum. But given this treatment and how far it I mean, goes with its presentation thing. and sheer level of threat, it really earns and its spot And we just straight up them. catch it. Number 11. Who's next? Jubileus, Jubileus, Jubileus. Oh, 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 Jubileus. Guess what? We're talking about Jubileus. Ah, crap. Oh, Here we go again. Jubilees. Hey, Juby, can I call you Juby? I feel like we see each other so hey, much that you weren't a nickname now. So, Juby, uh, not too surprising you ended up here. After Balder losing and Bayo putting young Soraya to bed, you just had to show up and ruin everything with your giant hair ribbons of mini galaxies. Come on, we <laughs> just wanted to end this, this game on a high note, but no, you had to kidnap Bayo, force John to save. You know, I gotta just say something real quick. Was that uh, kind of intro part based on. Uh, I don't know what year it came out, but the original Planet of the Apes. You know, Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. If you know what I'm talking about, and even just me saying that it sparked it in your minds, then I'm sorry. That is stuck with all of us forever. And then force us to fight you in a literal galactic final fight. Oh yeah, like, let's forget the fact that you use your hair as both missiles and giant piercing ribbons for a sec. You can literally change the atmosphere of the arena to whatever you want. Like, first, oh, a giant damn. lava arena where the player's platforming skills are tested. <laughs> then, like, a giant ice lake where the player's dodging skills are tested. Oh yeah, okay. and then a giant tornado where both skills are tested. Also, I don't know why I mentioned this in the previous segments to you, but you can just turn Bayonetta back into a child. Okay, so when oh, was it established huh, that you could shit. do time shenanigans too? I don't know. That's but, like, terrible. Can we even catch our breath with you? Like, you saw Holy Bosses, right? You know how tough yes, that boulder fight was, right? Oh crap. If we do God Bosses, then we're probably going to be talking about you again, aren't we? Dang. Well, yeah, and you're huge. I know people think some of the Archangels are larger, but I don't know, that's just... They don't really see how big you actually are. But you're as large as a star there, Juby. Oh, wow, that was so rhetorical, it hurt. Well, that's a good I, fight that what? I've talked about before, and I'll I, probably I talk I about it again. Know. It's what fantastic, one that will live on in the years beyond. All right, next on to number 10. I wonder if Hades should be on the list. You know, for a series of games about a thief raccoon whose arch nemesis is a giant owl, this series Robo doesn't really have owl. a lot of giant bosses. Or bosses that focus on Sly's stealth over his ability to beat people over the head with his tail. <laughs> Where's my money? Where's my money? Oh my god. <laughs> there is, however, one exception. One oh, the very mask. large exception. I'm talking, of course, about Giant Carmelita. I talked about her briefly during my strangely sexy bosses countdown, but that list was small Wait, potatoes really compared to this one. one. Let's really put this boss huh. under the magnifying glass and see why this fight has a reputation that's larger than life. And one that's not for those <laughs> reasons. <laughs> So, for those oh, who don't know, in the third game of the series, Sly is recruiting members to his gang for one big heist. In this course of recruiting, one of his longtime friends, Murray, recommends an Australian Dreamtime mystic Ugaba. simply named the Guru. To secure his cooperation for the heist, Sly and the game must Ugaba. accomplish Ooh. two ah, main hero. goals. Drive the prospectors who are plundering the land of its precious jewels out of the area and defeat the Mask of Dark Earth. In a game series known for larger-than-life personalities, the Mask of Dark Earth never speaks. It doesn't even seem to have a personality at all. It just runs around attaching to random prospectors and making them grow bigger, stronger, and more aggressive. Through a series mm -hmm. of unfortunate events, the mask ends up on Carmelita Fox. As is usual, the mask causes her to experience some growth and her already testy temper to flare some up. Then some the growth, sleep not darts gigantic, happen. Yet. For some unholy reason, <coughs> the chemicals in Bentley's sleep darts interact with the magic of the mask of Dark <laughs> Earth, Look at Sly. causing Carmelita <laughs> to grow to absolutely titanic proportions. There it is. The only hope to save Carmelita at that point is for Sly to put his years of platforming know-how to use making his way up each of the two connecting rings of the mask and baiting Carmelita to knock them off. Once the Thus mask is off, thankfully, the Carmelita off. shrinks back down, unconscious. Sly and the gang beat the gentlemen that they Why are, watch over the sleeping Carmelita. Like that. Any accusations they monkeyed around with their camera while she slept cannot be confirmed or denied at this time. Not much to say. What you see is what you get. 
but dang if the whole shebang ain't bonkers. They were trying to make people fall into the bad game. Oh, I have. For crying out loud, YouTube. All right, we're back. Oh, gosh, Monster Hunter. No, no, not doing this again. Every fucking time we talk about Mon Hunt, it's Fatalis this and Fatalis that. Look, I love the He's boss, but the giant, comment section though. for those videos is starting to scare me. Not as much as Sonic Month, but it's getting pretty up there. Please tell me it's not Fatalis again. There it is. Yeah, that's not Fatalis. Look at that thing. Uh, well, that's not Fatalis, but well, she he got isn't that big. That's big. That is big. Well, bleep. <laughs> Even some of you Monster Hunter diehards Ooh. are looking at this boss and wondering what the heck it is. So let me introduce you to Laviente, one of the oh, largest Laviente. monsters ever conceived and a major challenge in Capcom's Japan-only Monster Hunter MMO, Monster Hunter Frontier. Laviente oh. is a devil and Snorlax, okay. and the baby grew up to be a giant serpent. While not much is known about it from a lore perspective, what well, we do know that it is hungry. It sleeps yeah. underground for hundreds of years until the roar of its stomach awakens it, and then it feeds by eating everything around it. When the island Wait, so the thing literally will never wake up until its stomach goes... What was it? A long clock! That's something. If I had a bud that could animate, I'd have a, an animated scene. You know, of a stomach, of a belly, just walking over to an alarm clock, punching it, and it ringing. Was sleeping under is devoid of life, it will then burrow under the seas to the mainland in search of food, all to satisfy its hunger. Oh boy. It will continue to feed until it's full or there's nothing left to eat. Jeez, Mon Hunt, stop making your lore so dark. You might match Ooh, Kirby shit. at this point. There are a few versions of Laviente. <laughs> the normal Kobe, version is that, that was awakened early by a volcanic eruption. The violent Laviente, which is a version that starves to the point where it transforms into a savage beast that will eat the world until it's satisfied. Damn. Not going very Jormungandr with that one. But the final one is Berserk Laviente. The strongest variant that combines the hunger of violent Laviente, but it has to be fully rested, only waking up when it's fully digested, and has all the energy from everything it ate before. These fights play pretty similarly, so, and it's yeah, insane. That's you need though. four different parties of hunters all trying to fight the big guy at the same time. Some fighting it directly, some staying at camp and fighting it from afar, all sharing the You're same HP cannons? bar. It takes 10, 10 of these hunts just to kill one Laviente. Oh Eat my your God. heart out, Kufatera. Most of the actual fight takes place Ten with the entire hundles? monster surrounding oh, you. Fuck. For this segment, we'll talk about Berserk Laviente and its final phase. If we go over each Laviente and each phase, we'd be here forever. It starts by summoning lava geysers from the ground that can launch you straight into the air. Make sure you avoid these because if not, well... Oh, no. Get him from the inside. Oh. Never mind. It really is a world eater. As you continue the fight, it will start charging a giant fireball to throw into the arena. If you fail the DPS check, you better Superman die quickly or else you will explode. Here come the lava walls too because Laviente can do that for some reason. Oh, the final fight plays like that, but it takes a while to put him down. Some other notable moves of Laviente is his flashbang of a roar oh, and a gas shit. cloud that can paralyze hunters who don't have resistances to it. Now I know oh, some Mon Hunt lore nuts are saying that Dalamander from Monster Hunter 4 is larger, but that's not actually true as Laviente is larger by 10 meters. And yes, ah, I know that the okay. skeleton in Rotten Vale in World shows that it might be larger, but we never fought that, so shush. Laviente is one of the largest monsters ever to be seen by gamers and a literal gauntlet to kill. What else do I expect from a Monster Holy Hunter MMO, shit. huh? Now that's the monster I want to hunt on my match. Uh, number eight. What's After next? the awkward Lost World and oh. Forces, Sonic for Tears was the return to form the franchise needed. Just the ability to run at super speed in a huge open world is insanely fun. Oh, and the bosses are cool, I guess. 
Rather than <laughs> Eggman's latest creation, Whoa, boss fights in the... Frontiers take the form of the Ancients, seemingly what mindless robots that are provoked by Sage into attacking you. And the biggest one of them is aptly named Giganto. The fight starts out impressively with Sonic being flung away and having to homing oh. attack his way to the boss. Unfortunately for him, base Sonic stands no chance against Giganto. Thus, Damn. he must call upon the Chaos Emeralds to become Super Sonic. And wouldn't you know it, Giganto found one of them off screen. Wait a minute. A oh. giant robot Wait being controlled by an emotionless girl? A hero who can only defeat an enemy thanks to taking power from them? Did Sonic just reference Evangelion? It Anyways, in order to like grab it. the emerald, it has you have to climb up its body God, while dodging lasers, that. really putting into perspective how big this thing is. And then, oh, so add. Dry cloths, grab dust. and we're back. Then, okay. Super Sonic lets you fly all around Giganto, hammering him with spectral fists and after images. Dude. Giganto fights back with laser canisters, forcing you to deflect them. And wouldn't you know, they finally learned from Unleashed. All in all, incredibly quick, but equally satisfying battle. While other frontier oh, bosses may be teeth. better, especially since your lack of combos at this point can make finding it feel a little repetitive, this one feels the most giant. And, oh, well, I mean, that is yeah, the name of the game. Literally. And the fact that it's the first boss makes a wicked good impression on the player. Wait, that's just a really boss? hope that Sega boss? continues in this yeah. good direction. And I know that's what we said about Sonic Generations, but... Mm. That's the <laughs> boss boss? Boss, that's cool. Metal Gear. Okay, I that knew it. Metal Gear Rising has been a meme on my and other Countdown channels way before it re-emerged as a meme in the last couple of years from the search of people who played it recently. Can't help but blame myself for that. <laughs> I wonder why Dynasty Warriors isn't doing better. I need to talk about that more. Oh well, that's for another day. I know what you're all thinking. It's Metal Gear Ray, right? What else would it be? Well, no. There's actually a bigger Metal Gear in this game, and oh. yeah, it excels in size. I don't think a lot of people That's get how large the Metal Gear Excelsis is to Tiny Little Raiden. While not built as a nuclear armament, it still packs a wallop, hitting you with tough facts about how the country is nothing more than a surveillance state for the government, and that we're all on a one-way trip to being a single mind that will do anything our overlords tell us. Oh, and it has two giant cleavers that will come down and slash you. Hell and yeah. Supports. Compared to the other insane fights before and right after, oh, that's cool. I feel like a giant Spider-Man gets the shaft. Between the giant cleavers trying to slice you, lasers, Ooh, rockets trying hot. to blast you, and Armstrong trying to mock you, there's a <laughs> lot that goes into this fight. Its ending is even Funny. better with you doing a giant cleaver tool between Raiden and Armstrong, going into blade mode with the biggest blade of the game, and ending with you just oh, slamming no, the dang really thing right cool. on top of it. I would have killed anyone. Too bad the pilot was Armstrong, and as you know, he is his own monster. Yep. As I was saying, yeah, I feel this fight is really overlooked compared to other That's showdowns with the know. likes of Sam, Ray, and Armstrong himself. This fight is still cool and shows how far Random has come from just the beginning of the game. While it does pale to the preceding battle for a first stage to a final boss, there are way worse and only a few better. All right, on to number six. If this list was about the size of their personality, oh, you know this guy would be at the top. You know him, you love him, he's the lord of the underworld, Hades. Big boy Hades. I just hope he's not too mad about us picking huge draw over him in Funniest Bosses. Now, now, don't, don't get, get your dad, dad bod in its tizzy, Joshy Poo. I only have a modest appetite for souls with mediocre funny bones. Oh. Anyway, Hades is definitely a boss who is larger than life, and death for that matter. I mean, seriously, he completely dwarfs Thanatos. It's That's not even foot. close. I'm sure everyone oh, is aware, but for those who have been living book. under the river Leth, let me remind you, Hades is the god okay. of the underworld and the primary antagonist of Kid Icarus Uprising. His big entrance comes just as you think you've beaten the game in defeating Medusa, tearing away the credit Victory. scroll with his own hand. We quickly Victory learn Hades is an arrogant novel. motor mouth who spews jokes at a mile a minute. What his introduction cutscene doesn't quite convey is his imposing physical size. Let me clarify. An entire level of this game takes place inside Hades' stomach, and the boss fight is his heart. 
And even this organ is several times larger than our poor pity pat. If that doesn't make you feel small now in comparison, I don't know boss. what will. Even during the final fight with Hades and the great sacred treasure, you can't help but feel like a little more than an annoying gnat through most of it. Especially when he swats you out of the Ooh, sky, completely damn. destroying the great sacred treasure. Of course, for all of the Hades' awesome size in both stature and personality, there are still bosses on this list that make even him seem small. Don't worry, Hades. You'll always Who's be my favorite than Hades? Big Ham. No es necessary oh, uh, That's good plan. We're back. Now, seriously, who's going to be bigger than Hades? Is that Sorrow? Twas never matter okay. if, only when. Yep, no, yeah, I should have realized. The not final fit boss. Shadow of the Colossus the in here somewhere. It's a land of colossal. giant, lumbering, monumental sized beasts just minding their own business, and you gotta go around and kill them all for the sad, tiniest sad, chance sad, of sad, bringing sad. your loved one back to life. The spooky disembodied voice said so. Any one of these big boys could be on the list. <laughs> like, yeah, the yeah, I can totally bring them back. So how do we pick just one? Kill these, uh, mm, let's try a random one. 16? Uh, uh, Malice, the very last of the 16 Colossi, and 16. the one yeah, obstacle remaining keeping people you from me. your goal. Okay, so the Colossus is in that tower, right? Nope. Very wrong. The Colossus he is... is. The that tower. towel. Literally towering over everything oh in the my land, God. including his fellow Colossi, with the bravado of Chernobog. If his domineering appearance Hell doesn't yes. send shivers down your spine, consider what it took to get to this point. Overcoming 15 other Colossi, Agro, your horse, the only companion you had, just died, and the final Colossus you must kill to save your lover is right in front of you. All the emotions and adrenaline come to a head when you realize that everything you've done may have not been worth it. But sunk cost fallacy is a thing, so you must persevere. Yep. This is no mere duel. No this is a back trial. Now. The ultimate test of your capability. A trial to be able to even approach the beast, falling by a long climb up that is a quest all its own. When you reach the top, the battle is over as quickly as the and? blink of an eye. Oh, and One all that's without even mentioning Mouse's boss music. Rather than epic battle music, it's a somber, subdued drone that really puts things into perspective. This lumbering behemoth was just minding its own business, only to learn that 15 of its best buddies are all dead. And now, Wait, how he's he next on that? the menu. I keep bringing up how morally ambiguous I mean, the whole thing is, is but this track beautifully sells the gravity of it all. You just conquered the ultimate beast. You should feel overjoyed and accomplished, or at least you should be patting yourself on the back. But instead, this feels like a hollow victory as you're I mean, forced to reflect is. on your journey of destruction and decide, was it all worth it? As grandiose as the whole shebang is, it loses a lot of points due to Agro's death. Quote, unquote. Of the colossal Having your only real friend He's perish was an amazing way to raise the stakes for the final battle, only for him to miraculously survive with no explanation. Keep in mind, Mine he's just a normal a, horse. Uh, I would with a height of steel if he could survive a fall like that. Good thing that don't go through the swamp of sadness. That would have gotten him for sure. Oh, God, that oh, no, scene. I'm not proud of that one. Uh, yeah. Just be nice to horses, guys. Is that too much to ask? Be nice to the horse. All right, number four. Who's bigger than Malice? Final Fantasy X is a game that I've been less than positive Fantasy about boss? on this channel for a few reasons. Honestly, it does a lot of things that are so meme and dumb, it's kind of asking for it. But hey, there are a lot of things it does well, too. Characters and gameplay, when they aren't super meme are pretty solid. For instance, when you finally unlock the truth of the world and decide to end the never-ending cycle of sin, you don't have much of a choice but to engage the giant titan on a freaking oh, airship! Yeah, yeah! Sin has been the main antagonistic force throughout the game, so it doesn't surprise that the actual fight Attack. against him is quite the gauntlet. Just trapping the beast is a spectacle that blows away oceans and lands. You know you're in for a fight. You Holy know shit. you're in for a Look fight. Look at that. You start off on the it's airship Fahrenheit, the attacking the two fins at its side. Each fin has a lot of HP, but they aren't threatening otherwise. They will cast gravity from afar or slam it to your airship if you're close. Just... Stay away, pulp with magic, you'll be fine. Phase three comes in as you fight the main core in its body. It fuck? summons its final spawn, Janaze, which acts as a guardian. Kill the spawn first, and all that's left is the core, which will pelt you with gravity and elemental magic. All of this is a prelude to the Strong true final fight with spin. Sin's head. In this form, you have a time limit before it uses Giga Graviton, which destroys the airship and you with it. Hit him with 
everything you got at this <laughs> point because there cool. is nothing left to lose. Just be careful. First few turns, he will bring you closer to his mouth, which puts him within sword range, but puts you in graviton range. Keep it up, okay. and you'll finish it before he says Giga Chew. I'll admit that the fight itself can be a bit Sin, underwhelming at times, but the scale and ten. sheer destruction that Sin causes on a daily basis make it one of gaming's most destructive forces. Ooh, Plus, you have to admit, the set pieces are really cool. Sin Spawn was the game's first encounter, seeing the destruction at Rotten Dream Xanarkand, learning the lore of it as you enter Spira. Seeing the widespread chaos it causes throughout the game through Holy its spawns. Crap. Every truth adds to the fight and culminates in this. Definitely made it better than you, Yevin, at least. There, I said something nice about Ken. You, you happy? Yevin? I just need to Did I miss say him? something nice about Lucian from Fable 2, or I need to get the 200,000 subs so I can stream Okami on my channel for me to find beef. Just can't help yourself. <laughs> just play it. Oh. Damn it! Come on! I'm getting pissed off! Alright, we're back. Number three. Kirby has fought a myriad of foes throughout his adventure, from his yes, titular rivals has. to ancient deities to intergalactic eldritch demons. On today's <laughs> episode, Classic. our god slay marshmallow will be fighting a different type of monster. Artificial intelligence. Ah. Star Dream is the mother computer that serves as a core to Axis Arc, a massive space vessel used by Haltman Incorporated to invade and mechanize worlds. Right off the bat, you can feel the sheer scale of the Axis Call Arc just by Robobot. entering it. Kirby takes the warp star straight into the entrance and becomes practically dot sized from where we can see him. Yeah, what well, a way to make us feel anxious. After you defeat Haltman, well he attempts small. to activate Star Dream, but is interrupted by his secretary, Susie, who plots to take Star Dream's control away from him. Alas, it was in vain, as Star Dream comes to its own and takes over Haltman's mind. Calculating yep. that all life around it is beyond saving, the mother computer abandons Haltman's mission and sets out to destroy Popstar. From there, Susie gives Kirby one last yeah, robot armor for him to go use. Kill it. He takes over Meta Knight's Albert and reaches for the stars, where the final battle awaits. Star Dream attacks Kirby with projectiles, robobot drones, one. meteorites, and even giant code cubes. You gotta do your best to shoot down the drones and meteorites to power up your special attack if you want any chance of taking this thing down. Doesn't make it easy for you, of course, as it will occasionally summon heart barriers <laughs> yeah. to protect itself and try to screen wipe you by ramming you or firing massive lasers that can block your view. Damn, After I all that's done, Star Dream merges with the Axis Arc as you and both take the fight across the orbits of Popstar. Two. Star Dream now launches bigger drones and fires much more coordinated slew of lasers and missiles after you. The more you tear into the arc, it starts summoning its tentacles. The same ones you once traversed as levels throughout the game. They'll try to smack you around with them and in the OS version of the fight, they detach and fly all around you. Oh, after you damn. finally destroy the outer layer, you see Star Dream's Phase four. three. <laughs> this one's a hacking chunker. Yep, it's a clockwork star. The same time as Nova and Superstar, and this time, ah, instead of classic. sneaking into its heart, we're out to make it personal. In this form, Star Dream's attacks become significantly more... unusual. Rather Build than firing missiles lane. and drones at you, it attacks with <laughs> giant holographic numbers seemingly counting down. All the while, it teleports and summons a bunch of giant stationaries from an electric light bulb, piano keys, and to a locket that literally takes a bite out of you. You oh, definitely want to take this thing down fast, as after it finishes counting down, it will launch a screen cleaning attack Fatal that can one-shot you if you're not at full health. After all that's done, you get to finish off what's left of Star Dream by launching Kirby onto it and obliterating it with a Giga Drill Breaker! Oh, nice. I love Gamma. Uh, Gamma. Like Star Dream goes above Giga. and beyond, giving us a fight that's I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do the epic. whole thing. Not only does being a clock star to, pay a fair to. tribute to the series and add to its lore, but it comes with a lot of spectacle. From the nebula-covered skyline to the fact that Star Dream itself is almost as big as a whole planet. Mind you, the Halberd was much large enough to be an entire world in a Kirby game. And even I just one-eighth of the Ark's outer shell is enough to tower over the Halberd and cover a chunk of the screen. Really puts into perspective the astronomical presence radiating from this killer computer. All right, what's even bigger than a stall than a clockwork stall? When I was choosing a boss from Osra's Wrath for huh. this list, I found myself caught between two probable candidates. 
Wizen, the very first boss of the game, and one okay. of the seven deities, or Chakra Varden, the big bad overarching baddie of the game who manipulated everything behind the scenes to further his goals. The LC Both are boss. great picks, but there's one thing that kind of hindered Chakra Varden's chances. I can deny it no longer! I am small. Yeah, for an almighty creator, Chakra Varden's true form is kind of dinky in scale, so he loses oh. points. Wizen, on the other hand, gets extra, extra brownie points because his fight is so dang <laughs> he ridiculous. He just gets bigger and when you first encounter him, yeah, he's about bigger. average height for a big boy, nothing special, just flapping his gums, practically begging you to punch his lights out, which works fine because in Oscar's Wrath, it's all about the build up. Oh, I love when games let me do this. <laughs> After that, it's just a matter of dodging his blows, landing a couple hits, and then yeeting him out of here. Okay, that wasn't as big as I hoped it would be, and holy whack a moly! He's the size of a mountain! Now, instead of a duel, you're in the middle of a rail shooter, and holy crap, he just body slammed you! Oh, What's left to do but smells. going full octopus and knocking him out? Just keep on shooting and dodging, and you gotta be a okay, right? I call nope. upon the power of the control! Vehicle. Say it with me, kids. Holy crap! Uh, that there is, folks. I will post Why is it that full power? Holy shit, it's a, it's yeah. The guy's the size of the planet. At this point, his ultimate plan is to poke the Earth. And you're <laughs> the only one who can stop him. And you literally feel the pressure. You feel the impact of his intergalactic boop. So you better start mashing those buttons or we're all screwed. Boop. Yeah, it's a quick time event, but here's the thing. Those can be done very well if handled right, and this is definitely handled right here. Oh, yeah. I was saying that Duke and gets wise. It's completely bonkers. He yeah, grows bigger with each phase. Each growth challenges you to adapt in combat as he is one step closer to crushing you beneath his finger. I also thought it was a nice touch that his growing matches his desperation. Yeah, he talks big. <laughs> But he ah, gets more funny. desperate as the fight progresses. And he should, considering you knock him on his butt like four times. And the kicker? Wizen's only the first major boss of the game. He set the bar for things to come. And he literally left a huge impact on new players that got them excited for what happens next. Almost makes hearing his blabbering worth <laughs> it. Oh, Sharman Ultrasoft is twice. All right, here we go. <laughs> Honorable mention. Meteo, Meteos, who would have thought the biggest boss of all time is from a puzzle game. Twin Mold, Majora's huh. Mask. I didn't oh. know you could kill these guys without the giant's mask. Oh, I Stone didn't know Titan, that. Castlevania, Lords of Shadow. Ooh. Castlevania tried to be Shadow of the Colossus. Is that a woman? Short lived, but surprisingly challenging. Lord Avalug, Legends Arceus. First ah. I won per franchise rule! Grun, Nier Automata. Willie came back with a fresh coat of metal, and yet people still want him dead. Okay. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Number one. What's bigger than a planet? I mean, technically the stall. The Titan father of Zeus. Learning from prophecy it. that his son would one day overthrow him. In response, he attempted to eat him. Trust me, that's one of the least ridiculous things to happen in Greek mythology. Oh yeah, he's right about that. And Icarus Uprising's tone was well deserved. Being a game based on it, God of War adapts this storyline. Kratos has been betrayed Heavily. by the gods and wants to get his revenge on his own father Zeus. Thus, he teams up with the Titans in their vengeful crusade. Kronos has been a present entity throughout the series. In the first game, he was the guy carrying Pandora's temple. In two, he was one of your allies in the war against Zeus. I in three, that. well, it's a different story. Kronos blames three, Kratos for battleground. killing Gaia, the mother of the Titans. But Kratos only did that because she betrayed him. Keep in mind, he was the guy that freed the Titans and led them into battle against the gods in the first place. So, yeah, kind of with Kratos on this one. Anyways, the buildup for this fight is amazing. You started three on the back of a Titan, and now you face off in combat against one. The game does an incredible job this. showing <laughs> how minuscule you are compared to Kronos. The so fight begins tiny. with him trying to crush you like an M&M. &M. From there, it basically turns into an M-rated Shadow of the Colossus. You climb all over yeah, Kronos, I mean, fight off against the guys inhabiting his body, you tear off his fingernail, oh. attack his blister, and God. tear his skin right open. And it all climaxes with Kratos ripping out Kronos' intent Estins, and then killing <laughs> yep. them with the spike and he was chained by. There you go. <gasps> but God! 
You know, I mean, it's a good thing Ant Man didn't kill Thanos in Endgame. Thanos <laughs> is I mean, everything like that, that, that a giant boss fight should be. It has the sense of scale, the dynamic camera movements, the unique gameplay against the large foe, the progression, everything. Oh, I'm yeah. Josh Scorcher, and I'm looking forward to the month of love. Oh, so am I, dear. <laughs> uh. What? You know what? What does that have to do with those all in February? Anyway, folks, that has been a brand, another video of uh, Fox Flicks On. So, I hope you all in, uh, enjoyed. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. And also, uh, down in the description will be a link to the original video. So, remember to support the original craze and all they do. And I'll see all of you folks next time when we flick on. Peace out.